I met my first fire at age four, the Weldon Fire in a Los Angeles neighborhood called Granada Hills. It took off in high-speed winds, ripping through ravines and toward our cul-de-sac on the valley floor. I have only two clear memories of Weldon. Its billowing plumes captivated me, and my parents exhibited zero panic. Earthquakes and wildfires were as much a part of Southern California's landscape as canyons and suburban tract housing. I imagine Dad gathered Mom, me, and my five older siblings in the backyard to watch the show as Weldon threw ash our way. It came within a mile of our house, making it possible that Weldon was my inciting incident, the event in my impressionable years that sparked a curiosity with fire. But this theory conflicts with what the Indian pundit proffered two decades later while reading my birth chart. Fire, fire, fire. Never seen so much fire, he mused in a lyrical accent while tracing cryptic dots and numbers on the chart with his dark, bony finger. He looked up at me, a fit, freckled 20-something, with a strange mix of confidence and self-doubt. When he asked, What is your work? I told him I was a firefighter. His mouth broke into a massive, yellow-toothed smile. A breathy laugh escaped. Ah, cosmic joke. He looked at the chart, then back at me, and laughed again, making it clear that by nurture, nature, or both, I was meant to have a life of fire. Chapter 1. Matchsticks. State Fire Headquarters, 22 months left. I needed Bud to weigh in, so I called him on my cell from the bathroom stall inside the Shady Lady Saloon. A few blocks from headquarters in Sacramento, California, the modern speakeasy's velveted high-back booths and roaring 20s decor made for a comfortable meeting place after work. They want me in Andy's job. I whispered even though I had the restroom to myself. Ken and Red? What'd they say? Red said I got the top score, but I told her I didn't want the promotion. She gave me the look, then Ken asked if I trusted them, at which point I lied and said I had to pee. Are you in the bathroom? Don't answer that. Look, I don't think you have a choice. Of course I do. It's my life. Who picked the shady lady? Bud asked. Red suggested it. Who ordered the wine? Ken? It's over. They've made their pick. The wine is to celebrate, not to cajole. I held the phone to my ear, sat on the toilet with my pants up, and thought about the bizarre unfolding of this impending promotion. 